All right, so the second game between Inabendi and Nemesis, and this time round, I'm going to focus more on Nemesis, on how did they get the win? What actually happened? There are actually plenty of incidents, uh, controversial one in my point of view, so do stay all the way to the end, and I hope as we go through incident by incident, you can also contribute by commenting to me, like how do you feel? Should it have been a foul? Should it be a goal? Uh, there are plenty, so do stay to you all the way. If not, let's get to it. Now straight off, I'm just going to talk quickly on Nemesis. They actually scored the first two goals of the game. And over here, it's a quick free hit. Um, as they place the free hit over there, it's actually a very simple one. It looks like uh, Inamani uh, have gotten the situation in command, in control. But however, it apparently there's a hole for the shot to be passed through. Over here, um, in the midway through the first period, uh, Nemesis managed to get their second goal. So they were actually 2 0 in the lead as opposed to their game 1. So over here they got possession of the ball and a single play passing through the other side. Nice shooting by the forward before finding a hole through the defender. Now, next, I'm gonna mainly talk about Nemesis' defensive structure. Okay, as the play goes by, you can see that they are defensively very tight. You can see four of them back um, at the bottom, whereas they have one forward up top, uh, pressing when there's opportunity uh, arises. However, when ball comes back down, the four will compress together, keeping the uh, line um, tight. So over here, it's also another example uh, of the other line playing you can see that all four of them are closely uh, together with that one forward up top ready to pounce any time of a counter attack. So we we'll just let play goes by for a while more. You can see. And from here, you, if you look at the point of inner bandy, you might think that they have a good possession game. However, Nemesis' um, strength is in their defense. So right even after 30 seconds to one minute of possession they don't mind being compact in defense trying to find that uh, window of opportunity that may arise and boom that's the window of opportunity that i was referring to and it's a half chance now over here i'm just gonna talk about how aggressive nemesis are Whenever the play comes towards the bots, you can see one of the Nemesis player flew just moments ago and his defender is doing the same thing as the ball hits down to the corner. Now, although this play by itself, Nemesis has the ball, but whenever Ini has the ball and it's against the bots, again, bodies flying all over the place, um, trying to be aggressive and to win the ball back. This is another example of Nemesis having the ball first, but however, it is the incident of the ball. The body check by Nemesis against the school's player. So let me know, I would like to know your point of view, like this kind of aggression, are they positively aggressive or actually negatively aggressive in the game? Uh, is it right? Is it wrong? Uh, do let me know in the comments. Uh, I would like to hear uh, what you think. In the period 2, uh, Nemesis was leading by 2 goals and Ini had to get uh, back uh, by scoring a few couple of goals and indeed they have. So through this play in the power play, they managed to get one goal back. A nice uh, drawing of players before an assist to Azri and Azri taking his time before his track shot off to the top corner against Damien of Nemesis. Now, over here, I would like to talk about this textbook high pressing game that uh, Inabendi is doing or has done in order to get the two goals back. You can see that they, at this moment of time, have four players um, up uh, in their opponent's half against the three Inamesis player. So, what happens is Glendon, number 20 of uh, Inabendi, doing his press first, forcing the pass across of Nemesis and therefore his forward partner doing a second press. You can also see over here that Brendan is telling Jaden, uh, his defender, to press up as well 
and because of that a nice intercept before a quick pass in and a tap in for a reshot goal for Nemesis. I'll like play play on again. So in real time it can happen in just in a few mere seconds. So one press up, one intercept, a pass, a shot, and nicely work up. At period three, um, we started off with the remaining 20 odd seconds, um, seeing out the power play. That is a good play by Inabendi. However, the main thing is it was the crucial period because they are off to uh, draw. And however, there were many incidents that are debatable. And let me know how you think in the comment section as we go through them one by one. Now, schools over here um, doing what Nemesis will have done on them, which is literally giving them a hard time. And it's a scrappy goal. Uh, it's possibly the first time I've seen a school scoring a scrappy goal per se uh, in this playoff tie. Incident number one. Um, Nemesis having the ball looking everything as normal, but as the ball gets over here, you can see two players fighting off the ball. So far, so good. Referee calling for the whistle, and there you go. Next, number eight of Brandon giving a shoulder charge against CY. So that was the first thing that happened. CY somehow managed to grab hold of his stick and threw his stick off the court. Should I play back? Can you see the stick that literally just flew in the air? So, again, see why being bumped by Brandon on purpose and he somehow managed to grab his stick immediately and throw it off the court. Of course, what the school's goalie managed to do was very quickly restraining Brandon away from CY. So, my question now is this, um, as the play goes on, Brandon actually got the two minute penalty, um, but however, the nemesis player that threw the stick off actually went unscathed. He is still complaining about the situation, I'm not so sure what, was, uh, what words were exchanged between them. However, like I said, Brandon was being punished duly fair because he should not have gone for a shoulder charge. However, the stick thrown by the Nemesis player, was it? Um, should it be a punishment instead on him as well? Uh, I'll leave it to you to leave down the comments section below. As play goes by, Nemesis uh, somehow managed to get uh, their goal back and back into the tie to get it into 3-3. Here again, another form of power play, but this time around for Nemesis. Nemesis um, playing the ball on the left side of the court first. Nicholas and Sean having a bit of exchange with each other. So trying to draw the players over here before switching the play to the other side. And each taking a very nice drag shot towards the top corner. So with that, it was again all tied between these two uh, teams. This is yet another controversial incident because schools actually got their goal disallowed. Take a look at the play and it looks a very legitimate goal in my opinion on first glance. This is a replay and for you to check it out. Of course, it doesn't help that one stick she managed to flew moments before the goal was scored. So both referees came in together discussing um, what did they see and what would the decision have been made. Um, however, as play goes by, they actually call it off. And that's where in the bandy captain also approached the referee seeking clarification on what was the incident about. But basically, the goal was being disallowed and play actually continued. And with that, do note there is actually only 10 minutes more to go. So again, if you were to rewind back, check it out. Let me know, do you think it should have been a legitimate goal or should, have been, should it have been disallowed? 
incidents all over the place and remember the incident by Brandon before that and now also Brandon again but this time it was being literally bumped down by Nicholas Low. Again some form of scuffle and from there Nicholas have to go for a two minute penalty. So we talk about bodies flying off usually at the boards but here it is right smack in the middle of not so sure what was the debate about or what was the discussion by the captain of Nemesis towards the referees but Nicholas walked, walking to the scene bin but again what do you think was the challenge valid is it worth only just two minutes penalty or maybe even more however do note of the disallowed goal because with three minutes to go over here bam out of nowhere, CY scoring the final goal of the game, therefore the winning goal. If you look at the replay, it really came out of nowhere. So, but nonetheless, um, Nemesis managed to hold their fort because even though they had a power play with seconds remaining of the game, they still could not score. So, it is back to a 1-1 one, one tie and, and going into game 3. Now with game 3 coming up next Sunday, it will prove to be another possible hot-headed, uh, emotional, uh, feisty uh, exchange. So I do look forward to it and um, to see who will proceed on to the final, whether is it schools in Bandy or Nemesis. Do let me know in the comment section as well. What do you think? Who are you supporting? Um, which place or which approach towards the game do you prefer? The school's kind, where it's a lot more possessional game, or Nemesis, who are more defensively um, stubborn, I would say, and playing on a counter-attack. If not, I'll see you again on the next video.